our second speaker tonight comes all the way from Sardinia. <laughs> I hope it doesn't charge us expenses on this one. <laughs> um, Alex very kindly agreed to um, uh, talk about um, a subject is uh, not normally known to talk about. He's normally very keen to um, develop techniques and, 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 and share um, his techniques with us. Tonight is going to be quite different. Um, he said himself he's going to run along <laughs> about uh, more the aesthetic aspect of the, of the photography and talk about composition and what choosing your subject and what, what to shoot. Please welcome Alessandro Mustard. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, I, I thought, as JP said in the introduction, that I thought it'd be quite fun to, to sort of take a slightly different tack. I think generally when I come and talk, I'm happiest talking about the <coughs> techniques of underwater photography, the technical side of things. Um, and, and generally when, when I'm asked to come and talk, I think every time I've been asked to come and talk at BC, it's like, come and do a one-man show, come and show us all your pictures. And I always find a technical angle and just show you the, the shots related to that. So tonight, I'm trying to show you a sort of a, a slightly broader take on my portfolio of images. And finding a theme to, to run you through that was really the idea of, of what to shoot. Um, the structure of the talk is, you know, I do want to try and avoid being too technical. And I really want to focus on talking about subject selection um, and really how to find the best shots of those subjects. And I, I want to approach the... the the question of what to shoot from really um, where, what, what are we trying to achieve with our photography. Um, a talk I was also asked to give that I ducked um, several years ago, I think it was Martha or maybe, maybe Pete Liddell, I remember at a committee meeting this idea coming up and bouncing around the table. And I was asked to do a talk about where next. You know, they, I think the question posed was, so you've won a couple of competitions as a photographer, what should you be doing next? What should be your next challenge you should be setting yourself? So I'm going to hopefully try and touch a little bit on that. I haven't really got any great advice, but I can perhaps share a sort of a case study on my photography on really how I manage the portfolio of work that I'm trying to produce. Um, obviously, we all have things that we love to do in our underwater photography, but if we want to sort of reach our, our potential as photographers, if we want our images to have the maximum impact, the maximum resonance with as big an audience as possible, we probably have to challenge ourselves to, to start to take pictures of subjects that weren't initially our main interest in underwater photography, to, to branch out, to broaden our portfolio, to hopefully find those, those different images. So I guess I'm finally taking on that dreaded one-man show and showing you a little bit of my, uh, of my photography. That said, um, and this is a talk with a lot of digressions, I'm going to make my first digression and tell you a little bit um, about Iceland. <laughs> so this is nothing to do with the rest of the talk, but um, as many of you know, um, I've just, just come back from Iceland on Friday, um, where I was for three weeks um, shooting, and um, two, two of those weeks underwater, one week just doing a bit of land photography. Um, and many of you know I've been there because um, while I was there, uh, well, last week while I was still in Iceland on the shoot, um, a number of, of newspapers running some of my photos from that trip. And in fact, I'm up to, I think, over 30 newspapers now around the world who have published uh, my Icelandic pictures. And I think this is an interesting, I think just from a purely sort of business standpoint, it's a really interesting avenue for photos. The photo market is constantly changing. And one of the few growth areas for photography now is, is through agents um, placing images into the press and these becoming media stories in their own right. And the media story that, that I did from Iceland, as I'm sure many of you have seen, um, you know, in, in, the, in the papers in the UK and, and overseas, um, was a story that we as underwater photographers already know. I mean, there's only one famous dive site in Iceland. It's the, the Silfra dive site. And pretty much my article was about that, maybe wrapped up with a few other images. So it wasn't something new. It's like going, I went to Ras Mohammed, you know, and dived there. You're not telling a new story. And it's really about finding a market for images that way. And what was great about that is I FTP'd the images from the back end of Beyond in, in Iceland to, to the agent. By the time I came home from the trip, they'd been in 30 newspapers. I, my trip was already four figures into profit. And, you know, as a working animal photographer, you know, that's, this is a really interesting and new area, I think. And that's something you're sort of doing, you know, you're going on a diving trip and you're doing that before you're sort of coming back and writing the articles. So the first few pictures are from that, but just to tell you a little bit about the trip, Iceland is a fantastic place for photography. 
Um, the slides are on auto advance, so I can't talk for too long about this. So it's going to take five minutes to go through. I was invited to come to Iceland by some of the dive centres there um, and to photograph the underwater world of Iceland. The aim of the trip was really to document Iceland beyond Silfra, beyond this famous dive site. Um, and, and really, you know, is it a one-trick pony? Is there one dive site and that's all the island's got to offer? Or is there more? And the aim of the trip was hopefully to show there was more. Um, even though the press story has actually not been about that, but um, um, the, the, the more detailed um, writing we plan to do about the trip is that. They also were filming my, uh, my trip there for the Iceland, Icelandic television, so we were followed around all week by underwater cameraman and overwater cameraman and being asked your opinion every three seconds, which was um, not much fun. But never mind, it's the nature of these things. And obviously, one of the reasons I really wanted to go to Iceland was to dive these amazing um, cracks in the, in the volcanic crust. As, as you all know, the story is I'm not going to go over too much detail. Iceland sits on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the, the boundary between the North American and the Eurasian continental plates. Um, and in the centre of the island, this sort of rift valley runs up through the centre of the island, and on one side is, is the North American plate, on the other is the um, Eurasian plate. Within this rift valley, there's lots of these fissures in the ground, and the most famous of these is a fissure called Silfra, um, which is filled with very clear glacial water that mounts from the glaciers, runs through the rocks, which takes about a thousand years for this water to get to the fissure, and it's obviously super clear mineral water, very cold, it's about between one and three degrees, the water, but super clear, and it's great to dive. What's amazing about diving there is the transition from being above the surface to going underwater. When you look at these fissures from the surface, they give away very little. It's all shaded on either side, the surface is smooth and it kind of reflects the sky. And the transition from when you put your head underwater, from being above the water to going down is just phenomenal. And it's a wow every time you do it. And they really are spectacular. And I'm going to start by showing you pictures from the Silver Canyon, but then um, I want to show the other pictures that's going to run through from three other canyons around the island. They've all got slightly different characters, slightly different look. And, you know, so the first part of the trip was about exploring other canyons. So this is Silver, and you can see it's a phenomenal place, incredible scenery. Um, very nice to dive, lots of fun. Really, really dramatic. The next canyon um, coming up now. This is a canyon in the north of the island, a much narrower canyon, but with very sort of obviously jagged rocks, very attractive. So this is called the Ness Canyon. As far as I'm aware, no one's ever shot in this one before. Really, really interesting. This is a canyon in the north, very like Silfra, but again, no one's ever shot there. This is a canyon near Silfra that's normally closed to diving, and we had special permission to dive there. It's actually one where a lot of tourists go and they throw money in, which is quite fun at one end. And then the other end of it is completely untouched. So you, instead of having this bare rock, all the rocks are covered in algae. The Silver Canyon has quite a lot of divers going through it, so you don't tend to get this algae growth. It's, I mean, it's only crusting algae, but it's that's a quite thing. Um, we work very hard here. I mean, the water's cold, but we're doing sort of five hours in the, in the water each day. Um, I worked my way through two models as the day went on. This is my first model at the top, and then this is the second one. They're both knackered by this stage uh, at the end of the day. But really good fun. Um, a very, very productive place. And I'm just showing you literally the first few pictures. There's this, there's just, it's a very easy place. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, Iceland, it's a two and a half hour flight from Gatwick. It's a really easy place to visit. And then on to the sea. And the sea is quite similar to ours. It's North Atlantic, obviously. The scenery is fairly similar. Um, but what's great there is that some of the larger creatures we have, like wolf eels or catfish, as they call them there, lump suckers, lump fish, they're very common. You, know, you can see wolf eels every single dive, no problem even there looking. This is a female lump sucker. I've never seen females before. They obviously come in at night, you don't see them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're there non-stop. Lots of flatfish, lots of, lots of good creatures like that. So there's a good amount of bigger subjects in the sea. Um, this was, was one of the most amazing things I saw. Uh, visually, perhaps not, not, not particularly photogenic. This is actually a, a hydrothermal chimney um, and a, and a full-on hydrothermal. There's lots of places where hot water comes into the ocean around the world. But this is a proper hydrothermal chimney where it's not just hot water, it's hot water laced with minerals, you know, super saturated minerals. Although actually, as they come out of the seabed, the, when the water cools, the water comes out of here at close to 100 degrees, hits the seawater, which on this dive is 4 degrees, um, and immediately as it cools, the minerals come, the min minerals come out of solution, they solidify. And it's built this chimney that's actually 60 metres high. Now, it just looks like a big rock, it doesn't look like a chimney. Um, but, and just at the top, you see the vent where the hot water's coming out. And I really like this, this image where 
You can see the dyes are obscured by the mixing <coughs> waters, but as his hand comes through, you, you can see it's nice and clear. I think this is a quite a fun image of a really unique diving thing. And that for me is, is one of the things about Iceland that was really memorable. It's, it's not about going there for one type of diving. You really are going to see stuff you've never seen before because of this very unique volcanic landscape. And I think some of the scenery is really interesting. Obviously under, in the sea again, lots and lots of critters. Some things we get in the UK. It's the butterfish, obviously. Um, it took me a long time to get this bad shot. Um, it's the hook nose or poke. Um, lots of nudies and things, you know, so all the normal stuff, but nice clear water, nice and easy to work in, get very clean shots. Um, you know, the south coast was, was six degrees on, on the trip, the north coast was between four and two degrees, so a bit colder than the UK, but if you went in the middle of summer, really not that cold. I quite like this one, the, the, the kelp leaf went in front of the flash and it looks a really golden picture. Lots of interesting small crustaceans. Some quite weird ones that I've not seen before. A lot of these I, 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 I de deter, um, um, isopods, um, some interesting shrimps and things. Um, lots of skeleton shrimps. These though, those last two can are taken with your, um, your fibre to me, by the way. I didn't say that. Um, it's all going a bit fast. And then also back into freshwater, the freshwater diving there isn't just about canyons. There's rivers to explore. There's a lot of big, very clear freshwater lagoons. Um, and you've got lava formations here, big fissures running through the, the ground as it's been, the, the ground has been cracked open by the tectonic processes. Here a lake full of algae growth, very unusual shapes coming up. More cracks and cuts, and there's, there's a number of different dive sites, um, rivers associated with them. So that you've really got to go there with a very open mind to explore these different environments. This is a place where, where not, hot, not cold water, not hot water, it was about 16 degrees, the water coming up out of here. Um, and, and so, you know, it, 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 sort of a middle water spring, not hot or cold, in fresh water. And what was weird about this is these bubbling pools of sand, they were quite big. And you could actually put your whole arm down into them, and it disappeared into the mud. And it was pretty freaky, actually, because it just looks like sand. But it's this liquefied sand sitting in the cold, colder water coming out of the springs compared to the pool, I guess. And it just seems to sit on the bottom here. And you can put your hand down. I even put my camera down into it and took a picture. It's a sort of split level into the mud. A um, bit of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but just really surreal environments, very, very unusual. And th this shot, which is probably one of the most unusual of the trip, is actually a, a thermal spring where, where goldfish live. Anyway, that's all the time I've got on Iceland, I'll never get through the rest of my talk. Um, but hopefully that gave, gave you a nice little overview of, of the last couple of weeks.